So today I received a bit of a revelation about the nature of the human being, about what we actually are. And it comes in an analogy to uh, computers. You have hardware and software, and with the human being, we have hardware, wetware, and software. We have hardware, which is uh, your bone, muscle, you know, the more solid stuff. You have wetware, wetware being your uh, brain, brain stem, etc., etc., you know, your uh, neurological systems, basically. And then you have software being the actual soul itself, or the person. Now, the soul, that is what you actually are. You are, at the moment, inside of the wetware and the hardware, and you are able to control the wetware and the hardware. And this is why, uh, what's it called? Sin is not actually a thing of like, you know, a, a physical object is not like a sinful thing. Like, a, what's the word? Like if I'm eating something that is, uh, you know, just like, just by eating something, I'm not committing a sin because it is a physical object. You know, they are physical things that enter into the physical body and physically leave out of the body they are not actually affecting, like they do not change the software. Now, things that are sins, things like malice, greed, lust, envy, um, you know, all these sorts of things, these begin within the mind, or I should say they begin within the heart, they begin within the software, and then they exit out into actions in the world. But it's that beginning in there, inside, in the software of the person, in the soul of the person. That is what corrupts the soul of the person. That is what makes something a sin. Is that it is not a physical thing. It is not a physical manifestation. There are physical manifestations of sin. Entropy in the universe is caused by this, but at the end of the day, what sin is, is inside. Sin is the corruption of the software, not the hardware. And that, like, this is, you know, the hardware cannot corrupt the software, and the software cannot corrupt the hardware. They are separate. They are close, and yet diametrically opposed. Now, people who are of the hardware, people who let the hardware run things, like, uh, you know, just like any time that you have an impulse in the hardware, you gotta go for it. Whenever you're hungry, you go and eat. Whenever you get horny, you go and you screw something. Whenever you have just like impulse, you know, thirsty, you want alcohol, you want etc, etc, etc. It's like any hardware impulse, and then you follow it. Now, a person who follows the software impulse, the spiritual impulse, is like a person, a good way thing to put in here, the Holy Spirit is something along the lines of antiviral software. Because at the end of the day, a demon is essentially a virus for the mind. It is software replicated into the mind that essentially creates distractions for the software, distractions for the uh, the main operating system, and eventually attempts to take over. It's like a Trojan horse uh, virus for a computer, only it's for the soul. And, you know, not hardware, not, phys not a physical thing, but a demon is software, just like the soul of a person is software. We have hardware, wetware, and software, as I was saying. And I'm losing slight track of where, I come, where I'm going with this, but the main thing that I basically want to get to at the end of this is I was once actually possessed of a demon, and what it actually was, it started with an idea. It was inside, just something that I basically brought in from without. It was a file that I downloaded, essentially, that I should not have downloaded. It was an idea that I allowed to replicate itself and grow itself within my own mind. And that at some times was actually fairly close to being able to take control of my body, and at times, for very short periods, it had actually controlled my body. 
The problem with this, if you can't guess it already, is that the more you do that and the more it actually chips away and erodes the actual original operating system software, the more destroyed the soul actually gets, the more corrupted, the less it can actually, you know, if it, gets, if it becomes too corrupted, then it cannot be a meat program, essentially, for the master's use. I mean, you know, if you have, if you're clearing out files on a old computer, and you're trying to figure out which ones am I going to take from this one to my new computer, you're not going to take the ones that are vastly corrupted by a virus, now are you? I mean, you know, you, there are some that, you know, are at a point where it's like, they're, you know, they're flipping between, they're, they're close, they're in the middle, but they're salvageable. You know, you get the right software and it'll wipe the virus off of that, and then you can save that program, right? You can save that piece of software. So, the Holy Spirit is like an antiviral software for the soul, for a human being. It is something that enters into you, and it is able to screen things around you, basically put up blocks, scans all the incoming things, and anything that has a, what's the word for it, anything that has a piece of software that would be harmful, or ideas that would be harmful to the actual software that's in here, it can chop them out. You know, it's the best antiviral ever created. It can actually section it off, chop out the bad parts of the ideas, and throw them into the junk bin so that they can't, you know, basically they can no longer get past the bouncer. Now, like any antiviral software, however, if you decide to uninstall the, the software and then go to things that you knew had, thing, had you know, harmful viruses on them it's just going to you're just going to end up with the harmful viruses on them you know and then it's just going to start corrupting your computer and then all of a sudden oh hey all of your software is screwed up so the point that i'm getting at is some people have asked why do we need to have the holy spirit why do we need to accept christ and the answer is quite simple because we need the correct protection software for the soul. So, anyway, please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. All glory to God for this idea. I could not have come up with this myself. Y'all have a blessed night.